But that's very untrue. There is a recent um, article that was in the New York Times that discusses how our workforce in the United States is fueled by highly skilled immigrants. We have a huge population of highly skilled immigrants, specifically in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics here in the United States. They come here because of the wonderful opportunities that America can provide with respect to entrepreneurship, with respect to innovation, and with respect to education in our colleges and universities. And when people come here and they learn here at the colleges and universities, it's only fitting that they use the skills that they've learned and apply them in the United States to boost our companies, our, our incubators, our scientific facilities, and our research organizations for the betterment of our society as a whole. And the article in the New York Times expresses just that notion, that with all the talk about immigration, whatever side you're on on the fence, immigration historically has always been a driving force to our economy, our civilization, and our society. And it's something that we should look forward to and that we shouldn't be hiding from or we shouldn't feel confronted by. Well, you know, it, it sounds like what you're saying is, Immigration can be good for business. Absolutely. And, you know, it's funny. I heard that Rockville, Maryland, according to a Bloomberg survey, is one of the, it's one of the ten best places in the United States for business. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons it was cited was the, the brain power of the local workforce there. It's a very highly educated area. Um, there's a lot of biotech companies in the area, a lot of science and research facilities. And it's got one of the highest median incomes in the country. Right. right. So uh, I don't know if that correlates directly to the number of immigrants in the area, but uh, certainly I think you can make the argument that we ought to target these individuals that are out there around the world who can come to the United States, bring their ideas, and grow them into something. That's only going to create jobs and be good for the economy. I want to talk a little bit about some two bold initiatives that the FDA is undertaking right now. Uh, the first one of those is to actually build a better food label system that addresses more information, the type of information that consumer, consumers would find useful in making food choices. And they're pairing that at the same time with introducing a, another initiative to reduce the amount of salt that the Americans intake in their daily food. Um, we have a very salty palate in the United States. We enjoy salty food. And you may not realize that even when you go out and you buy a donut that you presume is a sweet treat, it's got a high amount of salt in there as well. Or a box of cereal. If you have a bowl of Cheerios in the morning, well, guess what? You've had 10% of your daily intake of salt, and you probably didn't even know that. Well, uh, an Indian American, a prominent Indian American, has taken the FDA to task on the salt issue, and I have to take issue with this. A and I'm referring to Ramesh Ponuru, who is a uh, conservative commentator that is featured on the Washington Post online. He often runs online discussions about various issues, and he's also an editor of the National Review. Very educated guy, um, but uh, he takes issue with the fact that the FDA is trying to control or restrict the amount of salt we put in our diet. And I, for one, think it's a great idea that the FDA is doing this. I, I think we need the ability to make better cho choices with our food and to decide for ourselves how much salt we want to eat. Uh, but Mr. Panuru uh, believes that the government is stepping too far into our personal lives and that this represents another overreach by the Obama administration. And to Mr. Panura, I have to say, I respect your views, but if you want to take a, a full container of salt and dump it on whatever you're eating, more power to you. But we should be able to choose with the food that we buy how much salt is in it because it's been linked to so many health problems like hypertension, heart disease, countless others, that I think this is a great, bold initiative undertaken by the FDA. I have to agree with you there, Dinesh. We've just been through months and months of health care reform debate. Well, part of that is trying to make America more healthy. Not only do we have to give people more health care options, but we have to make people healthier so they don't even need those options. And by reducing our sodium intake, maybe that's a step forward in the right direction. Well, if you've ever been driving through Montgomery County and been stopped by a speed camera, and I know it's happened to you, 
we've we've actually worked in um, speed camera into our monthly budget <laughs> in our household because we get so many tickets in the mail. But uh, if you've ever been stopped by one of these cameras, you owe a woman in Bethesda named Peggy Lucero a big thank you because she's found a way to take Maryland officials to task on these cameras. Uh, apparently, if you get a ticket from a speed camera, you can challenge it on the basis of the camera being validated on a daily basis. Maryland law requires that speed cameras be validated and tested on a daily basis, much like a a um, conventional radar gun that a police officer might use has to be tested and calibrated on a daily basis. The same is true for speed cameras. So she challenged her $40 ticket on that basis and actually won. And as a secondary measure, she contacted the state highway officials where she was